First tonight, years of struggle and working in low-paying jobs. It's a common story for new arrivals to Australia. For most, the ultimate goal is to find a role that matches their own qualifications. But a new venture is aiming to give migrants and refugees a head start by helping them to develop their own big ideas. Barbara Miller spent some time with the budding entrepreneurs in Parramatta in Western Sydney. So in the next three minutes, I want you guys to come up as, with as many ideas as possible. All right, are you ready? All right, go. Three minutes goes very fast, quick. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. What is really holding me back is um, that I'm afraid of failure. I might fear I might not have enough funding. This is a universal thing. If you want to become an entrepreneur, it's just scary. Or to stand up again. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Can we get you guys at the back? Um, Avi and everyone else, yeah, standing up. Great, fantastic. Initially, I thought it was just me or like some of my friends, but once I did research, I found that there are a lot of cultural barriers. Like we don't really know how the market operates there or network barriers, but uh, the statistics show that 65% of the people who come to Australia as a refugee or migrant are either unemployed or underemployed, so they're not working in the industry, which I think is a big issue, and this is why I'm trying to sort of do something about it. So what I'm seeing here is you, you've obviously got an amazing set of skills, you've got some great experience, and I think you have a lot of great ideas here. But I think the challenge that you have is it's taken you this it's taken you about ten years to explain what the business is. I used to work in companies like IBM, Oracle, Allianz Insurance in Munich. The offers which I was getting was kind of a bit less than my standard. Maybe I would have done it ten years back. So I thought of taking uh, maybe studying and doing a entrepreneurship type of role. a video game and a simulator so that you can test using Google Street View exactly the lanes in Sydney where you have to take the driving test. Left. <laughs> yeah. And then all the way to the right. As much as you possibly can. And then slowly back up. Idea is basically proximity marketing. So if you're in my vicinity and I need you, if the shopkeeper needs the customer to just walk in instead of just walk past, uh, how are they going to do it? So they're going to send an instant offer, and if the user is using an ad, they're going to get an offer saying, "Hey, you come in my shop, you get 50% off." And who doesn't like an offer? So yeah. Okay. So do that's you think, my idea. I think the barriers you have faced are to do with being a mother, a woman, a migrant. Um, actually, very honestly, I think the barrier is right here. Australia has been really nice to me, Sydney has been really nice to me, so I haven't really faced any discrimination at that end either. I believe and I feel like that the people actually love the quality food and a good taste. I would like to proceed for my career because I'm a, quite a career-oriented person. Um, but when I like with like one and a half years effort, I couldn't get through. So I just thought to adopt a different way. One of the common mistakes that we see is that people may be afraid to talk about their ideas early on. And so they're sort of protecting um, their ideas rather than sharing them. I think, uh, I don't think there's any sort of instance that I've really seen an idea that has been completely novel. I've probably seen it five, six, seven, eight times before. I mean, we invest across Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand. So I've probably seen it many times before. And I would encourage um, would-be entrepreneurs to share their ideas. The currency is not really in the idea, it's in the execution. Well, you know, when we look at teams, um, we look at a whole bunch of different factors. We look at um, how well they understand the, the problem that they're looking to solve. We look at things like their perseverance, their agility, uh, their ability to, to learn, their grit, determination. I mean, all of these factors come into play, as well as their ability to execute. 
um, whether it's from a uh, development perspective, an engineering perspective, or from an entrepreneurial perspective. And it's funny that, um, to some extent, the, the migrant journey right, resonates so well with a lot of those traits. In what way? Well, um, the ability to take calculated risks and to be able to you know, go forward and, and, and do things that take people out of their comfort zones, away from their families, um, away from all that they've known, to move towards something that they hope and believe would be better. Pleasantly surprised by the progress that everyone's making actually. We had a, uh, the first weekend you came to film, we had a sort of group of very inspired um, people ready to sort of take the next step in forging a new direction. So one of the things that we're trying to instill in their mind is that they should be trying to solve a problem rather than just um, going out and creating something and finding out that no one needs it or no one's going to use it. Um, so there is one person who's actually changed their idea just in the last week. The reason I changed the previous idea was when I looked into the statistics, uh, there were not that many takers because uh, the migrant population is 10,000 per month who is coming and uh, out of them probably 2,000 will only apply for driving license in New South Wales. So I dropped that idea. Absolutely, I think that would be a great idea. I think he says he wants to be an engineer apparently. That is a very, that is a very viable product. I'm um, definitely there's a market for that, and especially children of this age, where it is really hard for them to disengage from devices, how to utilize it constructively. Exactly. That, exactly. that would be exactly. So I think that's a that's a brilliant idea. A bit, little bit anxious at how the people are going to like whether they're going to like the taste or they're not going to like it so yeah that few factor is there but still we are positive okay so this is done where should i put this egg yeah here if you put this egg if you believe in what you want eventually you will get there how are you feeling Anila? how's this going for you yeah, honestly speaking, it's a bit tough. The way I was thinking is not turning out to be. I think this one is not right. Yeah, no. let's do another one. Yeah. In your idea, would you be doing the cooking or would you hire someone? No, I won't be doing the cooking. Mm -hmm. I must be supervising. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, good luck. Oh, it should be okay. Just maybe bring some plates in. Oh, wow. Okay. So that. Okay. Yeah. So maybe this one. They're a bit cold, so sorry about that. They're actually nice. Nice and moorish. It's just a nice set of spice. It's not like hitting you hard. They're good. They're crunchy. I like the different textures. Mm. Coleslaw and burgers are a good mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the Aussie bread's the weakest link. <laughs> so I hope that you know we take the positive feedback out of what we've got today and try to improve the next version of it. If you're an entrepreneur, it, there's no limit. Like nobody can stop you based on your cultural background, your um, your gender or if you're a father or a mother it doesn't it, can, it doesn't stop you you can go and do whatever so make your own path well alan jones is an entrepreneur in residence at the australian startup company blue chili he's also advised the catalyzer program and he joins us now in the studio alan jones thanks for joining us thanks for having me uh, we saw there a range of ideas ranging from apps to burgers yeah. When we're talking about startups, are those just really the beginnings of a small business, particularly when we're looking at starting up a burger joint, rather than you know what we traditionally think of startups being as being quite high tech? 
Yeah, I think the primary goal of the Catalyzer program is to take refugees and recent migrants um, who come to Australia hoping for a new beginning and, and helping them find a way to start a new um, that doesn't result in underemployment or reliance on social security for too long. If we can show the rest of Australia that instead of just finding employment for these people, we might be able to create viable businesses which create employment opportunities for other people. I think we've got some tremendous case studies to show the rest of Australia that skilled migration and refugee migration are two really important principles on how Australia was built and how Australia should continue to grow. As we saw there, hope is a big factor in all of this. Is that hope well placed when you're going out and making such a big risk? Well, I think one of the things that entrepreneurs in general have learned from the tech startup industry over the last 10 or 20 years is how important it is to actually go out and find a problem which is worth solving by learning from a customer. So the old way of being an entrepreneur was having belief in yourself, having some original inspiration and going out and seeing if you could find customers prepared to pay for that. But what we've learned from the tech startup industry is it's much, much better to go out and learn from the customer what problems they actually face figure out which of those problems is commercially viable to solve and then take a solution to that problem to market. Oh, that's actually quite different from the Silicon Valley model where you're trying to service a technological uh, goal versus here where you see people trying to service an actual need, something they've experienced directly. Well, the, the interesting thing about technology is, is it lets us uh, address a global market um, or, or address uh, uh, a local market in, in a much more um, engaged and, and frequent manner. Um, but the essential principles, underlying principles of what we call the lean startup methodology apply to creating any kind of business, whether it's a services business or a manufacturing business or, or any kind of business. Many entrepreneurs say Australia's policy and funding environment really zaps the potential and the life out of so many startups. They say it's just so difficult that you're better off going elsewhere, even overseas. Has that been your experience? Uh, my experience stretches back to about 1995 in Australia and, and on the one hand I'm proud of how far we've come in that period of time. We've, we've built an industry around. In, in 1997 we could have fit the entire Australian tech startup industry in this little studio. Now we have an industry with about $2 billion of venture capital behind it, a number of accelerator programs around the country, private, commercial, university. Uh, we have um, what used to be the CSIRO now heavily engaged in commercialising Australian research and development. And so I'm very, very proud of how far we've come. But at the same time, we've come less far than other OECD nations. You know, Why so. is that? Well, it's taken a long time to get to this point. The Australian economy has been reliant on, on resources and agricultural for a period of time, and then professional services industries like, like banking and telecommunications and so on and so forth. And we're only just starting to notice that those industries aren't going to sustain the amazing growth we've had over the last 20, 30 years for very much longer. We need to pivot now, we need to change, look for new industries to adopt. So from your point of view, is the end of the mining boom a good thing to refocus on the potential of startups uh, and, and, and to perhaps draw more funding into it and make people realise that perhaps there's another way, another comparable industry? I've heard one prediction that hopes that uh, one entrepreneur is saying that they expect startups to become a bigger industry than mining has ever been to Australia. Oh, I, I think if really what's going to happen is the mining industry will, will plateau or, or take a downturn from time to time and it's just going to continue to follow that sine wave of commodity prices. The tremendous opportunity before us as a technology nation is that there's a zero export cost to exporting technology. We can land ones and zeros, we can land software in any market around the world for the same price we sell it here for the same cost of export. So it's really just a question of do we want to continue to be an economy which, which is held to ransom by changes in commodity prices or do we want to be able to establish in the world's most geographically isolated OECD nation do we want to get into the business of, of exporting at zero cost to other nations? You say there has been some significant growth in the 20 years that you've been doing this. Where is that growth coming from? What sorts of ideas are getting ahead more than others? The first wave of Australian tech startup industry was all about changes in the media industry, um, how we display advertising to customers, how we report on that to advertisers and how we collect the revenue from that. Um, so I was an, an early hire with, with Yahoo. I was one of the people that brought the Yahoo brand out to Australia originally and that's basically where that generation started. There was a second generation that we call software as a service. 
So one of Australia's most valuable companies, one of Silicon Valley's most valuable companies is, is Atlassian. And that's the, the, the poster child of that generation. Um, and uh, now we're starting to see uh, innovations in fintech, in artificial intelligence, in autonomous vehicles and transportation, and machine learning. Um, and that's going to be the, the next great wave of, of development. So it's really just a question of, of how much we want to um, take advantage of, of those booms. We have the IP, we have the resources, we have the opportunity to develop the capital, um, and we have the opportunity to develop the talent. But, you know, money speaks, particularly in this, in this environment. How easy is it to get the funding and the investment to get these ideas off the ground? Well, to an extent, we need to rely on venture capital from overseas markets to, to come to Australia and help us grow our local venture capital. So the market is too small for that? Uh, well, the Australian venture capital market is, is growing rapidly as well, but it's a global market. So our, our ideas will find um, investment capital wherever they get the best valuations. And at the moment, that's often overseas. Um, at the same time, we're also seeing Australian corporates, Australian large corporates, get behind um, a number of these ventures. So we're running a program at the moment for female founders at Blue Chili, where we've got some of Australia's biggest companies supplying some of the capital and, and a lot of the support for those companies. We see a lot of potential opportunities there in Australia. I want to ask you where you see the future going, particularly as artificial intelligence becomes more prominent in uh, new ventures, uh, automation becomes more prominent. Where do you see the big ideas going, the ones that do get the support, that sort of venture capital support, the investment getting off the ground? So there's a, there's a lot of talk right now about how um, automation is going to change factories and, and warehouses and distribution and logistics and about how it's going to take away a whole sector of employment in, in, in uh, developed nations. And that's certainly true and that's important. We need to look at how to adapt to that change. I think another important change that, that not enough people are thinking and talking about is what artificial intelligence is going to do to uh, professional industries, professional services industries. If you send me an email today, asking if we can meet sometime next week for a coffee, for instance. I'm going to CC my personal assistant, Clara, and she's going to respond to you and say, look, here's some times in Alan's calendar when he could meet with you next week. Choose one of those times or let me know if there's another time that works for you. You go back and forth with Clara to negotiate that meeting and then she sends me a meeting invite and sends you a meeting invite. And you'll never guess that Clara is an AI. So the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed, right? And when you think about how much it costs for somebody to employ uh, an executive assistant, I pay about $100 a month for my executive assistant. So we'll see in a lot of sales roles, a lot of uh, customer service roles, we'll start to see artificial intelligence take on a lot of the employment um, opportunities in, in professional services in Australia. And so again, it's just a question, do we want to own some of that IP and profit from that growth and perhaps plow some of that growth back into developing other areas of the Australian economy, or are we always going to be customers? Alan Jones, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy.